Hey everyone, welcome to a very unique version of An Atheist Asks. I'm Christy and today I've got a really special awesome guest, Jason Camo, who you may know better as Pastor Jay from the channel Know the Truth. And we're going to be talking today about his YouTube career so far, his character, and also he is a former Christian who will be talking about his deconversion experience. But the other thing that I'm excited about when doing this special version of An Atheist Asks is that uh, I'm a big fan of Jason's work and we've gotten to know each other on Facebook and so We've consulted and collaborated even on stuff, but we haven't really got to know each other. So first, Jason, welcome so much, and thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> so now that we do that whole kind of weird radio introduction thing, I think... Right, right. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> So getting started, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I just do a bit of an intro, because I came across your stuff, I think you've been probably putting out like a dozen or so videos before I saw one of your videos for the first time. And why it really stood out for me was because it's very difficult to get me to laugh out loud. And just by way of an example, today on the couch I decided to watch a few episodes of 30 Rock because I didn't really know the show, and I watched an entire episode and I laughed out loud once. Your videos make me laugh out loud at least two or three times per video to the point where I have to go back and like go back on the video because I was laughing so hard I missed your next couple lines. <laughs> and because that's really rare, I really value it, which is why I like I got glommed on right away, like, keep making more videos, you're hilarious. This is exactly the stuff I love. And what's really impressed me so far is that you know, you've also been able to keep it really original. So yeah, I'm I'm dying to know more about like how long you thought about it before you did it, and how you you know you got a team of people that kind of help you. So I'm sure inquiring minds want to know. Tell us all about it. First thing I want to say about you having to go back and watch the video, which I think is kind of funny, is um, whenever I make people watch the video, like when I do, when I get done with an edit, they'll laugh out loud at the parts that I want them to watch. So I'm also rewinding the video so they can see the video again. So I think that's kind of funny, but. Um, the whole thing, I guess, kind of started um, well, probably three months ago now, and I got to the point where I was just, not, I wasn't angry, but I was kind of like getting annoyed by a lot of these videos that I would see, um, these crazy pastors that want to hit kids and, and these, and these uh, just this nonsense, and I would get mad. I didn't know how to respond to it, and I think the, verse, the first video that I saw that really uh, made me really upset was the Monster Energy drink commercial, or not commercial, show YouTube video that this woman did, and she was talking about how Monster Energy drinks from the devil and the Antichrist, and she had these, I, I'm sure everyone's seen it, and it bothered me a lot, and then I saw the, the Megan Fox video at the museum, so all of my friends were commenting on these videos, and commenting from a, a rebuttal kind of point of view, like, this is why you're wrong, and etc., so I decided, well, I'm going to take it in a different direction. And I'm actually going to join forces with these crazy people, and I'm just going to kind of mock it in my own way. So the first video that I ever did was with my old roommate, Jen, and, and I disagreed with the Monster Energy Drink lady, but I decided to agree with her, but add to it by saying how Rockstar was the, the drink of the devil. you know. And so that kind of started, but I still didn't have this Pastor Jay thing in my head yet. Um, I went along and did the creationist video, and at that point I realized, hey, maybe there's something here. And I decided that instead of being angry all the time, which is fine, I decided to just be funny. Um, I didn't think anybody else would find it funny, but, but that's kind of how it all started. It, it, it wasn't anything that I planned. It was kind of an accident. It was kind of me just doing this impulsive, let's make fun of this real quick, and then it kind of just turned into something that, hey, I can make something out of this because... You know, and I don't mean to be mean to any Christians listening to this, but it can be an easy thing to make fun of, like some of the ideas. And so I just kind of took off there. So. Yeah. And when you um, you have multiple people, you have people that help you with the scripts. And how did that team kind of come together? Well, um, it's kind of a, a joke. I don't know if anybody else knows this joke, but I only have script writers named Jay for some reason. <laughs> like, like I have a lot of people that, that help me, though. It's not just like I have uh, Jay Crofa, Jason Lewis, Jeremy Stevens, um, a lot of good guys that will send me like scripts because they'll, they'll find stuff that I won't even see. And to be honest, they're a lot better than I am at coming up with funny material. I'm just good at looking like an idiot on, mm -hmm. on video. Um, and so... Um, at the beginning, it was just you know me coming up with ideas. My my roommate would come up with ideas, but then my friend Jeremy um, started. He's the one that kind of really helped Pastor Jay take off, and I give him a lot of credit because uh, 
In fact, there's a couple of videos on my other YouTube channel, and he's the one that suggested I make my own YouTube channel, I make my own Facebook page. But um, as they started writing scripts, it wasn't just them. Other people got involved. I know uh, Stephanie Jones from uh, – um, she she helps atheists on air out a lot. Um, she decided – she's making a uh, Pastor J fan page right now. That's um, awesome. Cash from Atheist on Air, he linked my video. So it, it kind of just got really big. And I, I have just people will send me emails, random um, emails. Most of them are atheists, so they're not real emails. Um, but it's just, it's really nice, like the, the, the feedback that I've gotten and the, and the help that I've gotten. So I, I can't say that this is all my idea or my, you know, it's not, it's not just my baby. So it's, it's a big, a big thing. So. Yeah, it seems like it. And so how does, like, does it, is there a set process or is it very organic and people just send you stuff and you kind of film it as and when you can? Or do you ask people, or do you guys chat about ideas? Um, how, does that, how does that work? It, it's actually all of what you just said. <laughs> I mean, like, I'll get a random email from somebody sometimes, and I might be busy or I just might not have any ideas. And if I do have something good, I'll write it down. Um, but a lot of times I'll send it out to my to my script writers and I'll have them look at stuff and I'll have them kind of give me ideas or maybe look at something that I've written, like a script that I've written, and I'll have them elaborate um, on it. But yeah, it's it's a group effort. It's it's definitely not. Um, yeah, like everything you said. <laughs> yeah, can I? Because I'm really curious because I know that from like the first idea to the finished video it can take me up to two to three months to actually complete that process. So with you, like you think about your last video, like when did the idea for that come up? When did the script writing happen? Like how fast do you guys go from an idea to a finished product? Well, okay, so this is kind of funny because it will literally take me from the, from the time the script is written. The script might take a day or two depending on how busy everybody is. But once I get the script, um, it takes me maybe two to three hours to do the video because I, I kind of have like this method now that I accidentally stumbled upon. So I don't do the video straight through because I laugh a lot or I'll mess up a lot and I'm not very good at pronunciation. And so I'll say something and I'll realize I didn't say it right. So um, I've gotten a lot of compliments on my editing style, but it's not because I did it on purpose. It's because it's the only way I could do it and make sense. And so the, the longest part is, is recording the video, get my takes right, and then I spend like another hour just chopping everything up. The music's already written. I, I write all the music myself. It's already written, so it's just a matter of chopping everything up, putting my, my templates in with the Jesus and the dinosaur, and then putting my music in. And um, I might do like one watch through. You know, I might just look at it to make sure I didn't mess anything up, but then after that, it's good. You know, it's out. And so. <laughs> so you're a bit of a machine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I kind of give. I'm very. Um, like I'm very good with audio production, so I'm good with learning how to use programs. And uh, you know, when I I'm, I love I love programs like Pro Tools, and um, when it comes to video editing software, I'm good with Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. So I'm really familiar with the program. So it, it, it that makes it easier on, on myself too. You know? So once you know the programs, everything else just becomes a lot easier. You, once you know the programs, it, it becomes. Um, the hard part becomes being creative, I guess. Yeah. Now, you were previously associated with a YouTube show, right? You were... Um, no, actually, um, well, I do have another YouTube channel, but that channel uh, teaches Pro Tools videos, so it's more mm -hmm. serious. But, um, no, I was actually, uh, the, the last association that I had was, uh, I was the producer of Dogma Debate. Okay, right. And how is your experience on YouTube now with this channel different from that? Um... It, well, with my channel, the way I look at my channel, it's not really meant to be taken seriously. Um, I, I feel like in the athe atheist movement, we all have our place. Um, Dogma debate is good because it's it's a lot more serious and more structured, and and it, I feel like I mean it caters to everyone, right? And so um, when people listen to Dogma debate, it's a very they can learn a lot from it. They learn about the movement. They learn about the way we think. A lot of Christians can listen to Dogma debate. And not get as offended because they're they're approaching it from a very respectful um, position. Um, where I'm different is, um, I wouldn't say I'm an an angry atheist. I've just learned how to channel my frustration into some some would call it mockery or trolling, but I just call it satire because, like I said, when you see and that's the other things I don't attack. I don't mean to like attack every Christian. I, I I'm a, I'm usually representing the people out there like the Westboro Baptist Church or, you know, Ted Haggard or Ray Comfort or Kirk Cameron. Like I was watching, I, 
don't laugh, but I watched the Kirk Cameron movie Unstoppable the other day. And, like, he talks about how when God, when the flood happened and God put his rainbow out, um, the rainbow was actually his war bow of destruction or something stupid like that. And how he dipped into the ocean and it's pointing up at him. And I'm like, what is happening here? Why Why are you saying these things? And so I, that's those are the kind of people that Pastor Jay kind of represents. It's the crazier side of it. And that's just, so for my video, it doesn't appeal, I don't think, to a lot of the, a lot of the atheists that want to take things more seriously. And so there is definitely that that um, separation right there. So Yeah. So the last thing I want to talk to you about, and then we'll finish up the segment, is okay. um, about your experience on YouTube with Know the Truth and the reaction you've got and, and how you feel about people, how they're receiving your content. Okay. Um, the reaction is very surprising, to be honest with you. I don't think, I think I've had one Christian that's actually responded to me and um, and that Christian would tell me why I was wrong with what I would, with what I would say. And um, I didn't want to debate because the point of what I do, like, again, because my videos are satire, they're not meant to be taken seriously. So when somebody tries to debate me, I'm not going to debate them because I don't care. Um, but the, most of the reaction has, been com has come from um, either atheists that find me really funny or atheists that for some reason uh, hate what I do because either they don't watch the whole video and don't understand that I am being satirical um, or they just don't find me funny and I don't really react at all I mean there's a lot of negative comments um, but it is funny when I see an atheist try to tell me what I already know like that's not how this happened or that's not I'm like I know but I don't want to tell them I'm satire I have a feeling because they don't watch the entire video they see me rant for the first 30 seconds and they go up oh, great comfort you know I, I that's what I think anyway, but I don't react any way. I mean, I, some of the negative comments are funny to me, and um, because I'm not being serious, it's hard for me to take anything personally, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And did you say that um, you chatted with Steve Shives? Yeah, I chatted with uh, Yeah, in fact, uh, I chatted with him um, and, and a few other people uh, probably like a week ago now, but um, I've actually... Uh, he's a really good guy. I mean, I've seen, I've seen a lot of his videos, and... Um, uh, I, it's funny because there's so many great people on YouTube right now, especially with like, like Secular TV. Um, so many good people in there. Mike Phelps, Randy Bev, uh, Bev and Albany Rose, and and Tony Reid, and oh my God, oh, I'm yeah, just I mean, on and on and on. <laughs> on the, and and what's great about like me being part of Secular TV? It's kind of different. I'm still doing videos there. I'm the Christian ambassador to there to that um, um, channel, and I'm debating like I I. Uh, Answered one of your questions. I responded to um, D. Wayne. Um, I don't think that video. Huh? Did you see Harry Ray's cousin's latest video? Not. The, I don't know if he, he did another one. He did a second one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's up oh, and it's on Terry. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, and he. Uh, yes, oh. you have to check that out. But um, just quickly on Steve, he hit fifty thousand subscribers just uh, oh, nice. in the last few days. Yeah. So. I, I, if he's watching this, I have to thank him so much because he's responsible for like. Pushing a lot of my my subscribers my subscriptions up because he he did a video he gave me a shout out which um, I'd have to thank him and everyone else including you that's given me a shout out um, that you guys have been um, responsible for like making me bigger than what I should be so <laughs> not as big as I want you to be though I want right, you to right, right. yeah <laughs> yeah I uh, know it's Steve I also have a real deep affection for him because you know he did the shout out for me which got me the biggest boost of subscribers he's always yeah. just a great guy and he did a, a debate with Venom Fang X or Sean recently and it just was stellar I mean that's why I support him on Patreon because that guy is an articulate clever compassionate voice for atheism and I want him rather than sort of you know I don't mind Richard Dawkins but I'd like to see Steve Schneider yeah. up there more often yeah, and to add one more thing too, um, real quick, um, it, it's funny because when I mentioned before about everyone's got their own place in the in the movement, I'm not good at debating. I'm not good at articulating. I'm not good at. I, I know that I'm an atheist. I know where I think, but when it comes down to a debate, it's hard for me without actually stopping to think and writing things down to have a good conversation with people. So that's why when I decided to do videos, that's another reason why I kind of decided to be funny because. I'm not very good at, like, if, if somebody does a response video of, of going, well, this is, like, why you're wrong. You know, and people, everyone else that I know that I've interacted with is excellent, excellent at that. And so, yeah. Well, I guess what I think is um, we all play to our strengths. So I play up my yeah. geeky academic-y thing with my lecture notes and my well-researched referencing. And, you know, your, your thing is comedy. And it's really, but it's intelligent comedy, and it makes people think. 
And that's and the other thing that I wanted to say about what I why I think satire is so important is because when um, people have let's say a fear of hell, and yeah. it produces a lot of anxiety in them, another alternative to just being afraid is to laugh because it's a yeah. release of that anxiety. And I think being able to laugh at something you're scared of helps to demystify it and take it down a notch. And for people who are, and I remember listening to a deconversion story of somebody who watched Dark Matter 2525 video, yeah. and he awesome. laughed his ass off at it. But then the next day when he was thinking about it, like because he thought it was so funny, he felt guilty for laughing about it because yeah. it was about God. But he couldn't stop laughing. And yeah. so I think comedy is actually a really powerful underminer because de religion yes. demands respect and fear. And you can't really respect something you can laugh at. Well, and, and, one, and to add to that, one of the, I mean, I've gotten so many great comments, but one that always sticks out to me is this one person wrote something to the effect of um, watching my videos is going to make them question people like Alex Jones now, if they're opposed or not. And I thought about that, and it's kind of been like this underlying thing with me that it'd be nice for people to watch me who, who think I might be real at first to suddenly realize I am being satirical and then to look at people like Alex Jones, um, you know, Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort and go, well, they act just like Pastor Jay. They can't be real either. And it, it kind of undermines like what they're saying. And it, that's, I don't know, that excites me. <laughs> no, I think that's exactly the kind of thing, yeah, that, that's why satire is so powerful. Yeah. And with that, this is going to be a great way to segue, uh, segue into our next bit, which we're going to want to ask you about Pastor Jay and the development of the character. But here's where I'm going to take a break so that we can cut this. And so for those of you who are um, watching this first segment, stay tuned. Next week there will be another episode with part two of An Atheist Asks, Asks Pastor Jay. <laughs>